Riley, it is Jay Obertan. So I figured I'd try to do you one better here in terms of kind of going over this vehicle. Um, that way I just have them both side by side and I'll make you a quick video. So that way I can go over a little bit more of those differences here. So recapping, this is the 2014 CX-5. This it was originally purchased here. Every service and maintenance record is available on it as they were all done through us. And then this would also be one of now the four Mazdas that they have owned. In terms of trim level, it is a touring trim and it does have what is called the optional moonroof and Bose package. I'll get into here in a second. Now the vehicle itself, you have brand new brakes and tires. So you will see the tires are brand new as well as the brakes. Now, in terms of condition wise, it's in very good condition. Obviously, bear in mind, it's a 2014. So you are going to have a little scratch or scuff there. The ballerina sticker is also included. No, I'm just kidding. We'll remove that. She was a dancer. And then, of course, you will see going up your hill and everything. This is all wheel drive. You'll have your dual exhaust pipes because this does run the larger engine. Uh, in the Mazda family. Now, one thing with Mazda, their all-wheel drive system is ranked out the best in the segment, though I will say the Rogue is a close second with a pretty cool button it has. Now, in terms of interior, you're going to see this is a heavily bolstered out cloth interior. You'll notice that you have your five inch touchscreen up there. And in terms of safety, you are going to have your backup camera as well as the blind spot uh, warning. So you will have indicators in both the right and left mirror that will light up to let you know if someone's running alongside of you. In terms of features, this one is going to have a sunroof as well as the Bose stereo. Those are two options that the Nissan Rogue does not have. Uh, both of them are push button start. The mileage on this one is about 66,000 here. Now this is about a little bit bigger of the two SUVs, I would say. It's pretty close because Nissan kind of has a way of feng shui that makes the interior feel pretty bigger. Uh, but no doubt this is just a touch bigger, though I will say it drives a hell of a lot better. That is sort of Mazda's claim to fame is the way that they drive. It's just they're fast and they're fun. Now going over here until the Rogue, so keep in mind the difference between these two vehicles are going to be the number four. Why? Because the Rogue is four years newer and has about 40,000 less miles. Now I will say not to push you in one direction or the other. From the overall APR rate on a loan, you may be able to secure better terms on the Rogue, but no doubt given its price point being about 4,000 more expensive as well, it is going to be in the upper end of that budget around the 350 where that CX-5 should put you a little bit lower. Now you'll see wheel wise, same thing. They both have 17 inch wheels. Uh, the Nissan does have kind of those fancy LED daytime running lights, something that the CX-5 doesn't have, though they both have uh, high projector beam headlights. Now overall, you'll notice that you might see a little bump right here. I'll get to that in a second. That's actually a camera. But even the profile, this is sleek. I like it because it's the Rogue Sport, so it's kind of more of the sportier looking SUV. You'll see that you have your roof rails, your um, rear lip spoiler, you kind of have your chrome bumper guard. Of course, you'll see the AWD badge for all wheel drive. Where this is gonna benefit really comes down to some of the features. Like this button here is because you have the advance key, so you can walk up to the car and lock and unlock the vehicle as long as the key fob's in your pocket. You'll notice this one kind of has a reconfigurable storage center. You have your cargo cover. That way if Adam pisses you off working together, you can just stuff his body back there. No one will ever know except me. Uh, in terms of rear accommodations, you'll see it just a little bit tighter. It sits a little bit lower to the ground. And then interior wise, I will say this might have kind of a little bit fancier of an interior. You have a six and a half inch touch screen, so that's up a little bit. And just you have some curves in the center console and the dash that make it a little bit more interesting, I guess. Now down here is sort of where the features start to kind of come in. This vehicle has blind spot. This vehicle also has the pre-collision and lane assist. So if you're drifting, it can help you kind of get back in your lane. And if you are about to crash into something, it is going to start yelling at you and can start applying the brakes. Down there, you'll see heated seats is going to be an upgrade on this particular one, as is the dual climate system. So you and a passenger can set two different temperatures. This one also has built in navigation. That is something that the CX-5 does not, as well as XM satellite radio. Another thing the CX-5 does not. 
Plus, if I shift into reverse, both of them have a backup camera, but what makes this unique is this one also, oops, let me shut that door. This one also has the 360 degree camera, so that way I gotta back this up in a parking spot anyway. So just bear with me one second, Riley, while I go ahead and back, I was gonna say back that up, but back this up because you will see sort of that 360 degree parking camera to use as you'll start seeing the lines kind of appear in the bottom corner to make sure that I can line up appropriately with them, which I sure as hell am not. But then again, in my defense, I am sort of videoing and driving, which probably is not the best combination. But you'll kind of see down there, I'm just lining up perfectly between both cars. And done. Now, also over here, you will see heated steering wheel. And this is what I was talking about. The Nissan does have a fully automatic all-wheel drive system like the CX-5. It can't transfer torque as directly as the CX-5, but this has a complete lock button, meaning that if you have a steep hill to climb or you are like in super shit snow, you can press that and much like a four-wheel drive pickup, you can actually lock the all-wheel drive system. Plus you have a little eco button if you wanna be environmentally friendly. And then last but not least, another feature this has is you might see this little loop right here. So if I lock the car and then hold this loop, I don't know if you heard, but the engine just started. So you do have remote start. So hopefully this kind of helps go over everything in terms of these two vehicles as truly looking at both, these are probably going to be the best fit that I have in terms of the range that you're looking at and giving you the best bang for your buck. So definitely look forward to hearing back and sorry for the lengthy video. I just thought it might be best to really go over the difference between these two cars. Thanks again, Riley.